Hello again, physics friends. In this video, we're going to really uncover the um, true power of space-time diagrams. And in particular, in particular, we're going to see how do we draw both the ground frame and the train frame simultaneously on a single plot. And that's where we'll be able to see some really important um, uh, benefits of using these space-time diagrams. So on the screen, you can see the diagram that we've used in previous videos showing um, the left wall, the right wall of a train that's moving relative to the ground. So these black axes are the ground frame space and time coordinates. Okay, And then we see these red world lines for the photon launched from the left and from the right. So this is the world line of the right photon and the world line of the left photon. Okay. And what we said was, you know, in this from this diagram, we can see very clearly that EL happens before ER because the left event has a smaller time coordinate than the right event. Um, so the left event has a time coordinate that's down here, and the right event has a time coordinate that's right there. So EL happens before ER in the ground frame. But so we know that EL and ER are simultaneous in the train frame, so we should be able to draw a line on this plot that represents a line of simultaneity in the train frame. And that line is, is very straightforward to draw because we have two points that we know are simultaneous in the train frame. So a line of simultaneity is going to connect those two points. So let me draw that right now. So I'm just going to draw in blue a line that connects EL and ER. And this is meant to be a straight line. I'm freehanding it here. Okay. And I'll label this as line of simultaneity in the train frame. Okay. Now, a line of simultaneity in the train frame is parallel to the train frame's space axis. Okay, so this line is parallel to the train frame's space axis. Remember, we, we found that out early when we introduced space-time diagrams, that a line of simultaneity in a given frame is parallel to the space axis of that frame. Okay, well, what's special about an axis an axis is just a line that goes through the origin, okay? So a line of simultaneity is going to be parallel to the train frame's axis. So that means the train frame axis is just going to be a line with this blue slope that, that goes through the origin. So what color shall we use? Um, oh, we need a new color. How about... Um, Shall I make it gray? Let's see how that plays out on the screen. Yeah, I think that'll work okay. Um, okay, so I need to draw a line that's parallel to the blue line, okay, that goes through the origin, and I'm going to label that X train, and it's going to have units of feet as well. So these two axes are parallel to each other, and I'll indicate that with my arrows. So we are in pretty good shape now. We've identified already that we have these ground frame axes, and we've already found one of the two axes in the train frame. So the only other thing we need to do now is find the, um, the time axis in the train frame. Now, you might not know this, but we already drew the time axis. Um, we didn't identify it as such, but it's there. Um, how do we know where the time axis is? Well, we can use the following. Remember in a previous video, we, we pointed out that the world line of an object that's at rest in a given frame is parallel to the time axis of that frame? Well, let's think about this. We're trying to find the time axis in the train frame. So let's find an object that's at rest in the train frame. Well, we have three of them, actually. We have the right wall, the lamp, and the left wall. So all three of these um, lines are parallel to each other, and they are parallel to the time axis. Well, a time axis is simply a line parallel to these purple lines through the origin, but we already have that line. 
the Lamps line goes right through the origin, and obviously it's parallel to itself. So this is also our time axis. So this is the same line, which is the time axis in the train frame. It has units of nanoseconds. So let's, oh, I should have drawn that in gray, shouldn't I? My mistake. We're gonna use gray to represent the train frame axis. Okay. And let me thicken this line a little bit. Okay. So here we have two axes representing the train frame and representing the ground frame. The ground frame axes are perpendicular to each other. The train frame axes look like they're smushed inwards. And incidentally, they are smushed inwards, and they're smushed inwards by the same amount. What do I mean by that? This angle between the two space axes is equal to this angle between the two time axes. Not only that, but we know how to write down the slope of these axes. Uh, so for example, we showed already that the slope of this world line um, is given by rise over run, where rise is a delta t and run is a delta x. So the slope of this axis is, in, is the inverse speed, one over the speed of the object. Um, and we can do even better than that. We can write down an equation uh, for this angle, theta. So down here, I've copied the lamp world line, and I've copied this angle theta, and I've identified this right triangle, where the height of the triangle is 5 nanoseconds, the width is 3 feet, because that represents the slope of this line, up 5 nanoseconds, over 3 feet. And if you, if you remember some um, trigonometry, the tangent of this angle theta is equal to opposite over adjacent 3 feet, per five nanoseconds. Well, that's exactly the speed of the object. So that's the speed of the train. Okay, three-fifths C. So if we wanted to find this angle, we could do the inverse tangent of the speed of the train, and that would tell us this angle theta. So this plot has gotten a little hairy. I'm gonna um, refresh the page and just identify the key characteristics of the two different frames on the same diagram. So here we have the same space-time diagram. I've shown the ground frame coordinates. Those are the perpendicular coordinates. And then compressed inward from that, I show the train frame coordinates in the following way. And this is it. This is our space-time diagram in showing two frames on the same set of, in the same diagram, I guess. Um, and next I'll identify some key features of how to read off um, quantities in these two frames. So I'll start by drawing over here the ground frame axes. And I'll just label them XG and TG for position ground and time ground. And I wanna see where are the lines of constant position. Well, constant position means all points on a line have the same x-coordinate. So those lines correspond to lines that are parallel to the time axis. So I can draw a family of lines. Any one of these lines, all of the points on that line have the same position. So these are parallel to the t-axis. Okay. Well, the same is true in the train frame. Okay, so in the train frame, right, we have the perpendicular coordinates that represent the ground frame, but the train frame coordinates are smushed or compressed inward from that. So we have the train time coordinates and we have the train space coordinates. Okay, and a line of constant position, again, parallel to the time axis. So each of these lines represents a line of constant position in the train frame, right? So if you imagine there's kind of like a grid of these ticks on the x-axis and you extend those out to make these lines of constant position. Well, how about lines of constant time, right? Well, remember the time coordinates 
are ticked off on the time axis like that. So lines of constant time in this example are these blue lines that represent, for any one of those lines, every point on that line has the same time coordinate. So those lines are parallel to the space axis. Okay. Well, how about in the train frame? Again, I'll dot out the ground frame coordinate system, and then I'll draw in the train frame coordinate system. So we have x train and t train, and lines of constant time, right? These are the time ticks on the time axis. Lines of constant time are parallel to the space axis. Like so. Okay. So each one of those blue lines is parallel to the x, t axis. And if we put these two together, we can look at the coordinate grid in both frames. Right? So in the ground frame, we simply have x ground, t ground, and our coordinate grid just consists of the lines of constant position and the lines of constant time. So we have this square grid in the ground frame. But in the train frame, right, we're going to have a warped grid. Right, we have this compressed axis, so we're not going to have a rectangular grid anymore. We have x for the train, time for the train, and remember our lines of constant position are parallel to that time axis, and the lines of constant time are parallel to the space axis. So whereas a coordinate box in the ground frame is a square, a coordinate box or grid in the train frame is a parallelogram. So you get this warping of space and time into from square-like shapes into parallelograms. OK, so here we have, again, the kind of main result, which is that we have this rectangular square grid in one frame and a parallelogram grid in the other frame. Here, uh, in, the, in this example, on this slide, we're just going to put down events in space-time and make sure we know how to get the coordinates of that event using the graph. So here's how we're going to play that game. Um, I'm going to draw the axes here in two frames. So we'll have x ground and t ground. And then we'll draw the smushed axes of the train frame. There's our time coordinate, our time axis. And here's our space axis in the train frame. And I'm just going to lay down an event. Um, and remember, an event is a point in space-time. I'll call this event 1, E1. And I want to write down the coordinates of E1 um, in the ground frame and in the space frame. Okay? So, sorry, the ground frame and the train frame. So let me do it first in the ground frame. Okay? Um, the time coordinate of this event in the ground frame is simply given by um, this dashed line. So this is t, the time in the ground frame for event 1. That's this location here. And how did I know that? Well, I drew a line that was parallel to the space axis. That line represents a line of constant time. Every point on this blue dashed line has the same time. Therefore, the point here and the point here have the same time. So I can write that in as my time coordinate, um, t, g, 1, for event t, 1. How about the space coordinate? Well, I do the same thing, except now I draw a line parallel to the time axis, because those are lines of constant position. So down I come, and where I hit my, my ground frame space axis, that is the ground frame coordinate for event 1, and I can put that in for my coordinate. 
But what if I wanted to write the same set of coordinates, but in the other frame? In particular, what if I want to know the time coordinate of E1 in the train frame? Right? Well, to do that, I know that my lines of constant time are parallel to the space axis. So I will do my best to draw a blue dash line that's parallel to the time axis, to the space axis and the train frame. Those lines are meant to be parallel. And where that line hits my t train time axis is the coordinate that I care about. So that location is T in the train for event one. So I can put that in, T for the train for event one. And then how about for space? Well, again, I'm going to draw a line parallel to my time axis. That represents a line of constant position. So here I go. Do, 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 do. OK, and that line is meant to be parallel to my time axis. And here, where that intersects, that is x in the train for event 1. So I can put that in. And so I see that my event, E1, can be described in both frames as xg1, tg1, meaning this point, comma, this point. Or equivalently, it can be described in the train frame with different coordinates, right? So in general, xg1 is not the same as the train version of that coordinate. And the time coordinate in the train frame and the ground frame are not equal to each other either. So in closing, let's just look at the following situation. We still have this event E1, and let's say we were given the following challenge. We're asked to add an event E2, another point, that is simultaneous with E1 in the train frame, but that has a smaller xt coordinate. Okay, so for that, let's see here. Um, well, let's first identify um, the line of simultaneity in the train frame, right? That's parallel to the X train axis, okay? So this blue line is the line of simultaneity. In the train frame. So our point E2 has to be somewhere on this blue line, okay? And we need it, furthermore, to have a smaller xt coordinate. Well, let's find out what is the xt coordinate for this event. OK, so this is where, where that green line hits the x-axis. Um, that's the xt coordinate for this event, e1. So e2 has to be on this line, on this blue line, but to the left of this green line. OK, so one place we could put it is here but anywhere along this stretch would be fine. So we can label this event E2, and we can indicate that it has the same time coordinate by drawing the line of simultaneity, and we would then indicate that it has a smaller time co uh, space coordinate by drawing, by drawing out that coordinate itself. So here we can see that xt for event 2 is smaller than xt for event 1, Therefore, we've satisfied the second part of the challenge. OK, well, I hope that this has given you some sense of um, space-time diagrams, especially the benefits of using one diagram to represent both frames. Um, and we've had a little bit of practice playing around with events in both frames and identifying their coordinates. Um, and in the reading, you can get much more practice with these kind of tasks and this kind of work. Well, take care, and until next time, be well.